Okay, we're going live right now. And we're live. Hey, do you want to master the, the skill of selling in 2019? Because if so, you're going to want to pay attention to today's uh, to today's training, today's episode. We've got Paul Democritu. He's a fantastic salesman. We're going to go into a conversation on what it takes to master the selling conversations and the selling skill sets. Stay tuned, folks. It's Owen Video Live. And there's Paul. I'm trying to play my stinger. Boom. There you oh, go. I missed it. I missed it. Well, everybody, welcome to the show. I thought I had uh, I thought I had my stinger ready to go. I think I do. Let's try this again. Ready? And welcome to Owen Video Live. Owen Video. I'm Owen Video and I help amazing companies create videos that create customers with video sales funnels. And if you want to grow your business with video, subscribe to my channel right now. Let's get started with today's video. And welcome back to the show. I'm Owen Video. Today it's Owen Video Live. We're happy that you joined us. And I'm with my guest, a good friend of mine, an excellent salesperson. And we're going to talk a little bit today about the skills that you need to master for to be a professional in online and professional selling. Our guest today is Paul Democritu. Paul, good to see you today. You are an accomplished salesperson. You're a businessman. You're a live streamer. You're a YouTuber. Give us a little bit of background on who you are and your um, uh, your skill sets here. So I'm just um, a, a guy on YouTube that happens to be a master in sales now. <laughs> <laughs> I do a few things. I'm an entrepreneur. I am an author, as you mentioned. I have been I've been in sales since I was uh, very very young in sales science. And yeah, for those of you that don't know this, Owen Video, and I'm, I'm sure you know this, but I'll just give you a background. Was in sales, and yeah. he was very very intimate, very good, advanced. So don't let the titles of my intro fool you. Because Owen Video could be called Owen Sales. He just went with video. You know what? I uh, I definitely appreciate that. And, and I'm so glad to be talking to you because I do love sales. I grew up in sales, man. Like sales yeah. is my bag. And in fact, you know, we like to think about our company as a sales organization and training happens to be the product that we sell. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to have this conversation with you, Paul, and I'm excited to dig in. But first, I wanted to say hi to... Uh, our our friends watching on YouTube, Lily Tree is out there. Uh, Paul Peck, it's a it's a few of you guys out there uh, watching now. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, um, it it is like crazy for me here today. It is a holiday in the U.S. <clears throat> well, it's the day before a holiday, mm -hmm. so I've got I've got sort of a lot going on. All the kids are home in the in the room next to me. And my my producer is not here, so I'm using X keys for the first time to sort of like oh, control, wow. you know, sort of like control the show. On top of that, I can hear my I can hear my own voice in my earphones, so I'm kind of like like talking to Paul, and then I'm like going back to my earphones. I can listen to Paul, and there's so much going on, but we still stream, right, Paul? We still right. stream. The stream must go on. You know what I'm saying? Oh go on stream must go on definitely man definitely I, I learned that the hard way i used to perform on stage in in, in sales and in music and yeah. the show just has to go on and believe me when you trip and fall off stage like i have and you to like uh, some people and you're sitting there lying on your back uh on their couch and half yeah. on people you just need to keep on seeing on that microphone and make a joke of it uh, you're so, absolutely yeah. right, and have fun in the process, man. Because these are the pitfalls that actually make up uh, make up your constitution as a professional and as a salesperson. Is are you going to succumb to these moments of trial, or is that when you're going to chomp down and actually get to work? You know, I was listening to the 10x rule today uh, mm -hmm. by Grant Cardone. Have you have you listened to that book? Yeah. Of course, I've, I've, I've studied that, but the audio book as well, yeah. Yeah, Most a fantastic book. So, and he's talking about, look, you know, you get dumped off in the middle of El Paso, Texas, and you've got to make sales, regardless of your three ring binder being perfect, regardless of your laptop being charged. You know, I had to go on stage and do a whole presentation. None of my slides worked. 
you know, and so we had to riff and I still, I was like, okay, Owen video, this is the time to shine. And if you're a sales professional, if you're a small business owner and you want to make more sales, you want to improve those sales conversations. That's exactly the, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm glad that you're here. Share this with a friend of yours, uh, who is, is, is looking to improve in sales and get more customers and be sure to ask us your questions in the comment section. We would love to engage with you right now. Our, our topic today is the top skills that every sales professional needs to master in 2019. Paul, what are the first of those skills? What's the most important skill a sales professional needs to master this year? Well, that's in everything, actually, even sales, that's ambition. And before I go into that, I have to make this quite clear. A lot of people don't understand what sales is and what it has within it. It's not just your gimmicky salesperson that goes around and they just, you know, uh, try to push some product on you. We're talking about rhetoric. We're talking about body language. We're talking about um, how to do closes, how to close objections, how to price people. We're talking about everything you can possibly imagine in sales. And that breaks down into subcategories. So you have body language, for example, is how to read people, how to make them read you, or how to influence them and yourself. And also you can use body language even on the phone. So going back to what's the most important thing, ambition, because ambition is going to make you learn. Ambition is going to help you push forward, study, and you know, learn what you need to learn in order to be successful in sales, in anything. Okay. So let's talk about some of those things that you need to learn, right? So for example, for me, when I first got started in sales, I guess it was about prospecting. It was about meeting people, right? And and growing your network so that you had a qualified pool of people to talk to. Now, back in the day, yeah. that was like a business card pile. You know what I mean? Did you ever have a business card pile of, of this is like pre-internet? Well, how old are you? Maybe, Still Paul, not. maybe maybe no, I'm I revealing too much. Okay, so you got them. You've, you've got them. That's cool. Um, what are some of those prospecting skills that we need to learn? Well, what I need to do, okay, first of all, you know, you mentioned the 10x rule earlier on, the, the, the book by Grant Cordon, and I'll tell you something my mentor said, which also gave me that book and audiobook as well. He said, yeah, 10x is great, but you can't 10x in the desert. <laughs> yeah. So one thing is location, one thing is prospecting, so you don't waste your time. Now, he, here's something that's interesting. Most people, they, you know, there's a difference between pre-qualifying and pre-judging. Most mm -hmm. people, they pre-judge. They don't understand. Prospecting is not about the person having money or not. It's about being able to sell them and being there at the right time, at the right place. And it's also a matter of, you know, kind of like, Oh, qualifying them to, to, to see what they want to hear, what you can give them. Now, again, it's it, it's more than that, right? Because yeah. you don't want to sell something that's not you, that's not good. There is something in sales that I follow, and that's called sum thirtius, and that's Latin for I am third. First is God, then it's the client, then it's you. So you always have to do that. Now, as for networking, you mentioned earlier on, most people think networking is meeting new people, going everywhere, handing out business cards. No, most people forget about the most important place to network, where they already have their network. Okay. See, and I'm telling you right now, you have a client base, you have people that know you, that you have won their trust, you have built rapport. They have either taken something for you for free or you have sold them something. Why are you forgetting about them? Yeah, that's huge. Right? Uh, that's is. huge, man. I, I love that you said that because uh, it's, it's so forgotten, right? And this is one of the first things that we teach in our courses, especially if you're a small business, you're a local business and you want to get more customers. Um, you've got this warm network of people that came into your store, people that you know, your friends, your family, but we're always thinking about like the others, right? We're always thinking about the 10,000 that aren't here yet. 
and failing to maximize our relationships with the people that are already here. So we teach our, we say, look, when you're launching a YouTube channel or when you're launching a live show, uh, if you're launching something like the Sonic guy, Paul Reiser, okay, Paul Reiser, not, not mad about you, Paul Reiser, although sometimes I wish... I wish he were that good looking. Love you, Paul. Uh, Paul <sighs> owns, and he's watching us on YouTube live right now. He owns, or he franchises 37 different restaurants, right? He's, he resides on top of that. But he's launching a live show. He, or he's got this uh, behind the scenes show, this reality TV type show. And the thing is, we've got to launch that to the networks of all 37 of these, of these franchises, wow. the people that are already in your immediate network. Paul, what is some of your advice for for convincing a new salesperson or or a business owner who's maybe not great at sales to maximizing their relationships with the people that they already know? All right. Uh, the first thing I'm going to advise you with the, is this: when you have business cards, when you give business cards, when you when you take your business card, right? I used to always write notes of what the person liked and what the person was into and what hobbies he had on the card or any other note I want, you know, I met you there or whatever. I love that, yeah. And it is extremely important because what you, all you need to do to maximize your sales is a pair of scissors. Now, let me explain. Okay. Yeah, please. Every because I, I, you know, I get this envision of like, buy from me today, you know, <laughs> when you say something like that. It could also be used like that, but... Uh, the Paris is, is this, you basically, whenever I was on a trip or whenever I was out of town or wherever, I used to have a pair of scissors and cut out something I saw that was of interest to my client. So it, if he was into golf and I saw the latest golfing article, I would cut that out, send it to him. Now today, and like very fast after that, very quickly after that, we had mobile phones. You don't need a pair of scissors anymore. Yeah. So now you have a mobile phone, right? You can take a picture of whatever could interest your client, your yeah. friend, I hope you talk to him, you know, and just send it to him. And this could be, uh, if he's into architect, it can be, you know, it can be some buildings. If he's into golf, it can be, uh, if he's into whatever, birds, you see a bird, just take a picture, just send him on Facebook. You have no idea how far that goes. Right. Because he knows you're thinking of him. He knows you know him. Yeah. And that is powerful. So yeah, I, I think. Most people won't do it. Most people I, I won't think do it. A big part of what you just said is show him you know him, okay? Because mm. this is powerful in all relationships. A good friend of mine says, love isn't about how you feel. It's about how well you express that you know another person. Uh, you yes. know, I used to say uh, when I was in, in training sales, right? I used to be on top of a, of a, of a sales um, uh, room, like a room of telemarketers. And I would say, show him you know him. Right, that was my whole philosophy. By, you know, reciting or repeating back to them an acknowledgement of the things that they have said to you. This is also incredibly helpful. Would you agree? In in helping a small business to identify the pains their customer is feeling. Right, when you speak about the pain that your customer feels, for example, if you're a financial professional. And, and the pain might be not knowing how much money you're going to have when you're 64, right? And that, that like, oh my gosh, am I doing enough? It's overwhelming. The more, if, yeah. if that's a pain your audience is feeling, focus on that rather, right, than on the, um, oh, here, I'm so great. Here's my, I have the low, you know, free meeting, right? I mean, like free consultation type thing. Um, is that, right. is that where you, is that where you're going, Paul, with, with this show them, you know them? That is part of it. And um, we were talking about networking with your same clients, but we'll get into that in just one second. So, yeah, you need to provide the solution to their problem, yeah. uh, whether they know they have the problem or not, uh, depending on what type of skills, uh, what kind of type of sales you're into. <laughs> and now, <laughs> a lot of times, I want to, I just want to point something very, very important here before we go into that. And that's, most people don't know how to ask for refer from, for referrals from their network and even new clients. Okay, so most people, and this is important because you That's asked big. me how to expand your sales. And a lot of times people will say, um, do you know anybody else that would also want this product or, or something like that? No, no, there's two ways of doing this. 
at the end of the call or even in between, you can say, who do you know that would also value from this? Or even better, think of two names that could also value of this. If you say, think of two names, they will have no way of not thinking of the names. They will tell you the names and ask for their names. Then that's how you get referrals. And you know what? If you're right there, hey, let's call them together right now. Yeah, I love that. I'm telling you, there's no shame in that. People will laugh and they'll do it. I've done it multiple times. Okay, so so talk to me a little bit about, because that sounds really intimidating. I mean, you know, even for me, I've been in sales for a long time. Um, I have not mastered the referral process by any means, although I, I see it as like one of the biggest areas that, that, that we could all improve upon. I want to talk about that conversation, right? You're you're one on one with a prospect, so maybe maybe you're Paul Reiser and you're talking to a potential franchise owner, um, maybe uh, or a manager, uh, maybe uh, you're a local chiropractor or um, some type of business coach, and you're in a high level sales conversation. You're about to sell someone twenty four thousand dollars worth of, of 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 services. How how should your body look, right? Like, because it's intimidating. It's like you want to look people in the eye, but it's also like you're really scared. And so you start to kind of kind of like waver, you know, in your eyes a little bit. Talk to us about the importance of body language and how you um, master your physicality in those circumstances. Okay. First of all, your body language is important for you, for them, and it's important even over the phone. You mentioned telemarketing earlier on. See, your body language affects you. If you want to feel confident, Owen, and whoever's watching especially, uh, you need to act confident. Let me give you an example. If How does a scared person look, right? He's, right. he's, he's like this, tensed up, right? He's tensed up and he's talking like this on the phone. And they'll listen to my voice. It just sounds, even if they don't see me, you can tell in my voice. Now, if I have my chest open, right, and I, and I have my shoulders back, Listen to my voice now. It's more authoritative, right? And also I'm sitting up. I'm getting more confidence. So this is important whether you're in front of the client or on the phone. Don't forget you are an expert and your client needs to perceive you as an expert in your field on the same level. Okay? So body language will affect you. It will affect before you even go to sales. Now, as you are talking to a person, Honesty is palms up, right? So you right. want to be, you want to talk with your hands. Now, Owen, you do this. Nick Neman does this. You guys are masters at right. this, whether you realize or not. And you oh, guys, I, you I realize it. Hand. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> he's like, I realize. It. Of course, I realize. I do all the time, Paul. No, I'm okay. amazing, Paul. I'm not sure if you, uh, if you knew that. <laughs> As for eye contact, you, you, yeah, you want to look at them in the eyes, but you don't want to stare at them, stare them down good. like this. You know, that's it's good. pretty intimidating, pretty scary. You want to look away now and then. Look, eye you contact know, like, at the right moment, right in the right yeah. ways. When you when you go in to shake that hand, that's eye contact yes. moment. Hey, Mr. Jones, pleasure to be in your office. I can see that you've built quite a business for yourself and that's exciting. You know what I mean? Those are the moments where you're making eye contact. And if I'm acting weird and fidgety, it's because I'm hearing my own voice echo and I'm just trying to like, like get the best volume so we can have the best conversation. Sorry, it looks like I have a beer hat on my head at this point, jeez Louise. Jeez Louise, this is me without an editor folks, me without an editor. So eye contact, Paul, what else? Right. Uh, one thing I would mention, I don't use surnames. I use first name basis for many reasons. First of all, I know it's a bit of a cliche. It's like you hear your name along the phone, but you hear your name in general. But people like to hear their name. They've been hearing their names since they were kids. Right. Look at dogs. When you hear their name, they give you their attention, right? So when I say you, your name, Owen, you have no choice but to give me your attention because right. you're used to that. You're programmed to that as a kid. So I use first name basis and don't, don't, don't feel um, weirded out, if that's an expression, to say their names multiple times in the con conversation. Do you agree, Owen? Uh, yeah, you know, multiple times without sounding weird, too. You don't want to be like, Jim, I love the office, Jim. Uh, <laughs> I think that using the name strategically and confidently, you know, um, yes. 
oftentimes I think we we don't know our prospects well enough. So you go into a conversation and you're like, um, uh, you're thinking in your health, self, is it Jim or is it John? Is it Johnson? Is it Johnny Boy? Or maybe the guy is Michael and you're about to call him Mike. You, you know what I mean? Like you need to know your prospect better than that, right? So for example, you know, if if he introduces himself as Mike, call him Mike. Otherwise, Michael's appropriate, right? And when you say when you say the and I'm, we're using a lot of male names, but I'll tell you, um, uh, that's that's only because uh, you and I are both men, and we're sort of like uh, just kind of. But it could easily be a female, and this is for female salespeople too. And female salespeople, I mean, uh, gentlemen, find more female salespeople. You know what I mean? Uh, that, a great pool of talent there. You know, you come in and you say, you, you know, you're talking in the conversation, well, we, we don't like the pricing has, has been, and you, you lean forward and you say, uh, Mike, can I level with you for just a minute? Mm -hmm. You know, you notice the confidence. You know you're going to use the name, and you do so strategically and confidently, right? Don't waste that opportunity. You know what I mean? Or am I getting too complex? Am I getting too deep? No, no, I, there's, there's not too deep. I mean, um, this, this conversation in sales can go for everyone, right? I'll, I'll take it a step further. I'll take it even deeper. When do you touch your client? See, a lot of trainers say, touch your client, make sure you create that rapport and touch them. When do you touch them? And most people don't know how to answer that. Yeah. And the truth is, you touch your client whenever he laughs. So what you're doing is you're programming your touch with his laughter. Yeah. And the more you do it, the more he feels good with the touch. Touch. So right at the end, when he needs that push, all you have to do is touch him on the show. He's like, come on, Jim, let's give this a try. And uh, that's a close. And that's using body language. Uh, that's huge. That's huge. Our good friend Nick Nimmin is saying, I'm horrible at names. Uh, which is interesting to hear from Nick because, uh, you know, Nick, you're such a personable guy. You know, Nick is a guy who is instantly likable. Uh, and that's one of the things that I've, I've, I've always uh, adored about Nick. Lily Tree is saying, I'm happy for people to use my name, but it always feels a bit salesy when salespeople do it. I think you're right, Lily Tree. I think that comes back to this whole process of you've got to use the name appropriately knowing that everybody you're speaking to has read a book that says use people's names, right? Especially like a, like a, a, a business person. Like I know you're a salesperson coming into my office. I know that you're yeah. a salesperson. So I know you're going to try to do things like mirror me, right? And I know you're going to try to do things like, like use my name. And so you have to do so in a way that that is strategic and very, I think, authentic. It needs to appear authentic. Um, uh, Paul, talk talk about like the belly fear, right? The belly fear that sort of kind of comes over us is you're you're about to ask an important question. You're about to go into your clothes. Uh, how do you sort of suppress that belly fear that tells you you're asking for too much money or you're not ready? He's not. He doesn't like you. This is not a good. How do you sort of beat down that fear? to deliver your message powerfully uh, every time. Right. Uh, by the way, the, um, the name calling, the, the, the calling him by his name doesn't sound salesy. The salesperson sounds salesy. Oh, boom. Okay. <laughs> so, bingo, bingo. <laughs> so um, that fear, everything you're feeling has got to do with body language. It's what I said before. If you want to overcome anything, use your own body language. All you have to do is realize what nature around you is doing. So, okay, for example, birds, when they are threatened or cats or whatever, they try to make themselves look bigger. And if you see, they'll spread their wings or their their their, their, their hair will get back uh, on the back. We, we stand the cowboy stance. But in general, you know, don't have your body language, um, you know, looking like you are weak and you are scared. Let me give you an example of how powerful body language is. And it's going to blow your mind. You ready? I'm going to tell everyone do this with me if you can, okay? If you can. Just do this with me, all right? I want you to pretend somebody's next to you and you're standing up. Imagine this. Point at the person. Just point like this and order them to sit down in the chair. I'm, I'm serious. Do it. I'll go, sit down in that chair. Do as strict as you can. Like, point at them, yes? Yeah. Try it. Sit down in that chair. Sit oh, down in that it. chair. All right. Sit. Now. Do the same voice, exactly the same, with your palm up, please. 
Wow, my palm Do it, up. Try it. Oh my gosh, Paul! Yeah. Immediately, that you know, th guys, you got to try that. <laughs> Just putting the palm up immediately, you feel it. You can feel it in your your whole hand opened up. Paul, that was fantastic. So guys, try it's this. Okay. I want you to try doing like this. Sit down right here. And then move to more of a like like a, a palm up and just see what that does. That feels amazing, Paul. And you know what? Like this is such a guiding hand, um, uh, you, you know, sort of scenario here that I just love. That's fantastic. So body language changes you. It doesn't just change the other person. Body language should be changed, used to change you, to change what you feel fantastic so by mastering body language you're not gonna feel that belly, belly fear that belly fear will be excitement and that is just beautiful uh, uh, you know what nailed it that's definitely a meme paul that's definitely going to be a meme that we're going to cut out and i've uh, uh so much good stuff from here you know um the, the lack of confidence, would you agree, comes from a lack of preparation and a, a lack of understanding of, of who you are. You know, um, the, the, the gazelle doesn't go into the race afraid, right? The gazelle begins to run from the lion and immediately is thinking about home, right? It's like, I've got to get home. He's not thinking this lion is getting faster. You know what I'm saying? He's coming after me. You've got to stay focused on what you came to do there. Uh, you came to present your price to a willing prospect. And I think too often we're presenting our price to prospects that aren't willing. They haven't been pre-qualified. They haven't give a, given us like the proper amount of yeses. Um, in yeah. order to in order to even get the price from us, Paul, let's talk about closing the sale, right? When are you ready to move in to a close? Your closing starts before you even see him. You, okay, first of all, the, the always be closing, which is used a lot. You have to understand that your closing starts as soon as you make eye contact, even on the call before that. Too many people try to close at the end. Closing starts from the beginning, yes? Yeah. You were talking to me about how to um, get the yes, get your, your, your client to say yes. Yeah? Yeah. Now, you did it. picture this. I just did it twice. <laughs> Okay, because I'm ending with yes, and that's the last thing you're saying, and I'm just using it with a question mark. Love it. Now, if you combine that with an alternative close, and you're going, and I'll explain what that is in a second, and you're doing choice, 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 alternative close, alternative close, alter alternative close, can't say that fast two times, and you're followed up by yeses, you're getting people to get conditioned to be able to make up their mind and say yes so at the end of your presentation what does that do you up your percentage your closing percentage of them saying yes and being able to make a decision by the way an alternative close is when you when you give them um an, an example of give them a choice they're both good for you so okay give me an example, example of that so give me an example of that you're your, you're selling me you sell me sell me this pen paul <laughs> give me a second do you want me to sell you this pen now or after the video? That's Great. an alternative close. I, I love okay? it. That fan, yeah, yeah, bingo. You know, you know what I mean? You know, kids, put it this way. If you have kids, because you mentioned, I know you're a father. You have kids. You have an amazing family. Would you like to do your homework before you watch your cartoons or after? Uh, you know, the, this is fantastic. And I, I really strongly believe in asking more questions. And I see this really with a lot of younger salespeople and a lot of younger business people. And this is who I'm speaking to right now. I'm speaking to like the young chiropractor. I'm speaking to the, the CFP that's just starting out. I'm speaking to the retail shop owner. Maybe it's a gym, maybe it's a vitamin shop, you know, and you're going to the chamber of commerces and you're networking and you're so excited about your business and you put everything on the line and, and you're gonna make things happen. I don't see that person asking nearly enough questions yeah. i see that person waiting for an opportunity to speak and there is so much power in in asking questions that are recorded right into sort of a you know we use active campaign as our crm but into sort of like a notebook where you can come back to this customer and say even in the next chamber meeting and say hey jim how's sally Right where you 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 can show them you know them and it goes it goes back this you can ask them questions about what they uh, what they need so ask more questions Paul 
what are some of those questions that we should be asking during the sale to ensure that the prospect is even ready to hear a price from us? Holidays, jobs, kids, before you even get into it, man. Okay. Talk about that. Holidays, jobs, kids. Holidays, I just said because uh, because I used to sell timeshare, so it just came out. Um, <laughs> You're a real salesman, dude. You are a real salesman. The, 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 a timeshare salesman is a massively successful salesman. Let me tell you something. The the strategies that you guys learn and the training that you have to undergo. My dad was a timeshare salesman. My good friend Don, he's a former client. He left real estate to go do sales after working with me. He's like, I love sales. I want to go be a salesman now. Uh, I love that you did timeshare sales. So you're, you're talking about holidays. You're talking about building rapport, correct? Yeah, holidays, jobs, kids. Plus, you know, people love talking. Well, first of all, you talk about holidays because you just get them into the mindset of talking about holidays. So, it, depending on what you're talking, uh, what you're selling, then uh, you, their job, and no matter what job they are, are doing, it's important, right? And and this is true. I don't care if it's a garbage man cleaner all the way up to a CEO of a big firm. It's important. He knows things you do not know. Yeah, and good. don't just fake it literally make it a habit of becoming interested and learning about different things is extremely important. I find it's it a great joy. I find it a great joy. Uh, uh, yeah. For example, you know, we I had a client here recently that was a real just pain in the butt, you know, um, and one of the top rules of, of influence, right? When someone's a pain in the butt, they're, they're, they're resisting your leadership, right? And yeah. so, as a leader myself, as a student of influence, right? It's I go back to my my ten core rules, right? The first of which, if you want to have influence over somebody, you build relationship. So what I do is I start I go to his page and I look at what is he or his profile, what is he commenting on, what's his personal life like? I see this guy making comments about the recent uh, baseball game. So mm -hmm. what do you think I do the next day? The next day, out of nowhere, I send him an email. It's like, you know, hey, man, um, I normally don't talk about this. Like, I would never say this publicly, but your, your so-and-so local team did excellent yesterday. Great job on a good game. You know what I mean? And he hits me back with this like, oh, yeah, don't you know it? But all of a sudden, he's lighter and, and he's nicer. And it bought that relationship time right? You're putting more money in the bank. You have more capital with this person now, all because you make it an effort to get to know who they really are and what truly motivates them, right? Let me give a power tip right now, because sometimes you meet people that you don't know and you haven't researched, depending on what you're selling. If you want to genuinely show that you like somebody, you might hate them, okay? Because a lot of times, you are talking to people that are just not likable. They might stink. They might be, you know, just somebody you don't like. Find something about them you like. I mean, he, he might be wearing a really cool tie. He, he might have, um, I don't know, some really cool shoes. If, if, she's a, if it's a woman especially, they love the shoes or the yeah. handbag compliment. And find something you genuinely like about them. You, you know what I mean? And uh, because otherwise, if, if you're trying to compliment someone yeah. and, and, you know, and you, and he knows that you don't like him, he knows you don't like that thing about him. Yeah. You'll say it in a way that's so sarcastic, you'll lose him. It'll be funny for me, but it won't be for you. So try and find something you like about them. By the way, Owen, I really love your hat, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know, I got it at Vid Summit where I was uh, the host MC, right? Boom. Yeah. More information now for you to use, right? And, and for you to sort of acknowledge. Paul, you brought up an interesting point and I want to make a meme out of it. So I'm going to ask you this question now, knowing that I'm going to repurpose this later. Paul, you're a professional sales perp and you work at... I got to do that again now. <laughs> it's a, what's a perpin? I have no, I, I have no idea. Uh, Paul, you're a professional salesperson. You work with a lot of strong feminine salespeople and sales and business leaders. Is it right to compliment a woman, a female, in these sales and professional environments as you might do a male? Uh, or where do we draw the line? I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that. Are you in the U.S. or are you in Greece? You know, that's an interesting point. I'd love to hear more about that. But we're definitely in the U.S., Okay, so in general, we didn't rule Mac with the Romans, but I think a lot of people are putting too much emphasis, more emphasis than what they have to on that. Listen, if you want to compliment a woman, you compliment a woman. Sales is flirting anyway. 
okay? And you, you know what? If anything, I wouldn't like that. Uh, that's great. Uh, that's great. You know why? Because it's not PC. It's not the bumper sticker answer. And, um, you know, I feel like, the compliments to the other salesperson or the compliment to the boss is a lot like using the name, right? Um, you want to use it in a way that's meaningful and you want to do so in a way that, that moves the conversation forward, right? That moves the relationship forward. So you don't want to come in and be like, wow, hey, hot stuff, right? And of course, I don't think anybody no, really. But. but, Owen, but. Something important, right? That yeah. people don't think of. You see a powerful woman, like you said. You see a powerful woman, right? And you shake her hand. A compliment could be, wow, that's a really cool handshake. Or it could be, and then she'll like that because she wants to, you know, seem stronger. She might be a feminist. Okay, and, okay, you know, fantastic. Actually, I, I believe that, that complimenting the handshake is vital. And, and here's the thing, Europeans tend to do a lighter, it's, I wouldn't call it feminine by any means, but it's more of a, it's more of like a, like a gentle embrace here, like a, like a, you know, here's, great to meet you. Um, the American handshake is much more of a cowboy handshake, you know what I mean? And you want to have that handshake. Some guys, they come in too early, you know, they come in too early and they grab right here. It's very important, guys, very important that you stop grab the wrist and adjust the handshake bring it up to the full handshake wow and it's not a big deal you just you just kind of grab the other hand and you you get in there because there is there's a power thing there right you don't you don't want to let a bad handshake throw things off and when you get a good handshake and i i, I believe here I mean, you guys want to reveal something about me especially with a female when a female gives me a great handshake and in fact judy fox gave me a fantastic handshake when i met her at at um video marketing world you know it was the exact same thing they shake her hand i look her in the eye i said that's a fantastic handshake i believe it says something about a person and correcting the handshake says something about you what are your thoughts paul democrito well, I believe that if you want to compliment someone, you compliment them. If you was a beautiful woman, you compliment her. She's a beautiful woman. If it's a good handshake, you compliment her. It's a good handshake. If you genuinely like the hat, which I like the hat, you do. Let me tell you something about handshakes. Three types of handshakes, yes? Yeah. There's the forward handshake. Let me try and get it on camera here. It's right there. All right? And this, this is an equal handshake when you handshake somebody like this, all right? Here, you're taking control. Here, you're giving control. Now, in politics, this is very important. You see this all the time. And people try to get the overhand to look more important than the other person. Right. Um, what you want to do, your typical handshake is straight handshake three times, and that's it. If somebody tries to take control and puts your hand down, yeah, you could take one step forward with your left leg so you naturally come into a space. But you know what? That's all that's all 1980s. I just give I usually give another hand and, and I just smile with a way that here, take the control, man. I don't care. You know what? And, and there's something to be said about like the 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 upper hand, right? Or the elbow yeah. grab. I feel like that moment, yeah, like that moment of 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 meeting and greeting is is certainly in ma in in male perspective, it's certainly there's certainly a sizing up. Right. And not necessarily like in a negative way. It could be in a way of like, hey, I'm about to spend 30 grand with you. Can you give me All a right. good, can you look me in the eye? Can we, are we, are we compatible, you know, to have a relationship together, right? For the next year, especially like alpha male, alpha male, right? There has to be a synergy there. And so that immediate, you know, meet and greet, I believe is very important, right? To do that well and to practice that. Paul, have you practiced this? It's kind of like, in the mirror multiple times of course uh not in the mirror in general but but listen here's the other thing you know everyone talks to go put your hand out first don't do that man don't do this not it is not one hat uh, fits everyone if i come to your house or when you don't know me i'm not going to do on you also and i come in with my hand like this you're going to kick my uh, kick me you know it's all right <laughs> it it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay it's okay all right the a word <laughs> The, the A, -word. A word. We now, have some leverage. We have some leverage on the A word there, folks. Now, uh, bring up a great question. Um, profanity in your sales presentations or a general coarseness. 
Uh, right. Here's a quick story that I was working at a radio station. It was actually the last real job I ever had. This is probably back in 06. And I actually, at the time I, I worked for a Christian music radio station, Christian music right. radio station in Orange County, uh, real family friendly, um, uh, show and believe it or not at the time I wasn't, uh, wasn't even a church goer, but I worked there and we were ambitious. We had a great sales team. Well, they, they got rid of sort of the grandfatherly sales manager and they brought in a new sales manager and he took me on a ride along. And on, on day one, like we had just fueled up the car, cup of coffee in hand. I sit down and, and I'm turning on the car and he, he says, Hey, what's the difference between a blah, 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 blah. And he tells me the filthiest joke I had ever heard up to my life until that point, up to my life until that point. And I remember being a young salesperson at that time thinking like, like, like how am I supposed to react to this? Right? Is this funny? Is it inappropriate at work? Um, and I think what came out was sort of a, like a mixture of the two, kind of like, <laughs> you know, and it was, it was, it was bad for everybody. So when do you know when to use this coarseness or, or, or maybe this crudeness, do you do it to relate or do you do it? Cause that's who you are and, and exactly. you want to do real business with them. What is your, what is your boundary or your, your, your coaching on that? All right, my mentor, Ben, uh, who is a liver legend, Ben Gay the Third, yeah. doesn't like profanity at all. He doesn't like swearing. He says it looks cheap. And I agree with him. And I've noticed when other people do it, you know, if in your pitch you said the F word and you're throwing F bombs every, you know, few minutes. But if you are Tony Robbins or Gary V and you're doing it to take attention and that's your gimmick, that's fine. I used to be a rapper. Sometimes I swear. I, it yeah. depends where I am and who I'm talking to. But you don't, you know, if it's not you, you're going to look cheap as well. Yeah. So make, I guess, in, you can say this, make sure you wear the suit and the suit doesn't wear you. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, if you can wear it and you can rock it, that's great. But if it's not you, if you're not Tony Robbins, if you're, I don't know, it's not your style. If you are not known like that, just why why open up a can of worms? No yeah, one's gonna. I, I made that decision a long time ago. I've never been, uh, I've never been a, a person of profanity. You know, even as a young kid, I listened to a, a lot of rap as a kid and hip hop, and I still do. But to me, it, it's like you said, like profanity has always been a thing left for performance maybe or like right. artistic and creative use. And I think that there's there's probably a, you'll, you'll see a balance of that in my uh, in my in my own personal life. But I actually made the decision a few years ago because I would kind of go in and out of using um, harder words in, in certain places. Uh, and I just found like I just didn't have the rhythm. Like I always thought too much about it. And I noticed that when when in audience with people, I was dividing the audience into two different people. Number one, the side of the audience that that was like, oh, I can't believe he just said a swear word. Oh my gosh, right? And then the other people that are going like, yeah, he just used a swear word. He's like one of us, you know? But either way, I had them thinking about something other then what was my general purpose? And so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it out of the conversation exactly. entirely. That being said, I do wanna share a story, if I may, you know, about a time where where I was, uh, I met with um, uh, a speaker from the National Speakers Association. I used to do a lot of work with the uh, with that audience. I still do with that audience. And and she, she had she had a mouth on her, Paul. Let me tell you, like, she, she knew how to use the words. And she said to me, um, she said to me, you have to excuse my language. It's who I am. It's who I'm always going to be. Um, you, you know, and I hope it doesn't bother you. And and having having not said a swear word up until this point, and I said, ma'am, I don't give a what you say to me on the phone, right? And and now here, I'm sort of stepping outside of that um, in order to help the client understand that she can work with me, right? In order to help yeah. the client understand that I'm flexible in the non-moral issues. And to me, it's not a moral issue. It's more of an artistic issue. It's more of like, you know, um, uh, you, you know, if you read the New Testament, as Paul and I both have, um, you, you know, Jesus said some things, you know, you're, you're basically sons of vipers. Now, in our culture today, we say son of a, we say something different, but it's the same thing, right. right? Harsh words have always been around. So it's, you, you use them, I think, as you need to in the situation. 
And I don't think that's inauthentic. I, what does the audience think? Those of you guys watching on, on YouTube Live, is that inauthentic to balance um, when you do what you do? Paul, what are your thoughts? I'll do it in motivational speaking. I try not to do it in sales pitches. Yeah, beautiful. So if I'm motivating my sales team, if I'm motivating the company and it calls out like, listen, you got to do this. You got to get up and fight. What the F are you doing? Yeah. Good. Let's get it's done. Yes, it's fine. And obviously, you can't do it on YouTube. I love <laughs> that. I love that. You know what? And let's let's talk about that. And for those of you guys watching on YouTube, phenomenal show today. It really is. It took us a while. It took me a while to like mellow out and like I have no producer today. I'm pushing all the buttons alone. Uh, we didn't get up on Facebook. I've got an echo in my ear. It took me a while to kind of like find my flow. But we're having a great conversation. And Paul, I'd love to have you back <clears throat> uh, when we start our, our next okay. season of the podcast and, uh, and and dig more into this topic because we're, we're talking about such great stuff. Now, you mentioned, uh, you, you know, you listen to profanity, you listen to stronger things in sort of like the pump up phase, the motivation phase. Um, I think this is this is huge. Uh, not so much the swearing, but the fact that you're you have a ritual of motivating yourself and picking yourself up again. Let's talk about what are some good skills to master when it comes for being a salesperson, right? The personal development side. How do you stay motivated? How do you stay ambitious uh, when you're in an industry where you're you're destined to get more no's than yeses? All right, the first thing you have to realize is you ever heard of the term always be closing? Scrap that, always be learning. You have to understand that you need to learn. And you can learn from clients. You can learn from animals. We were talking about body language before. You can learn from kids. You can learn from everywhere. The, it's, it's often what you already know that stops you from learning. And it is vital yeah. to keep learning and expanding your skill set. Now, what is that skill set, right? What is that? Body language, reading people, it's it's rhetoric, you can read rhetoric, it's it's how to talk, it's it's psychology. There is so much you never know at all. And at, at finally, you know, I think a lot of people, and I said this before, is realize it's not just about closing. There's no magic close. Well, actually, there is one magic close. There is just one magic close. But, and maybe we'll talk about that for, for later. But, you know, it's it's so much involved in sales, guys. You have to understand that once you understand what sales actually is, you'll see how beautiful it is, what colors to use, where to place things, where to mm. sit. Yeah, where it, it is just it's a science and it's beautiful. It, it is really is. there's an elegance to it. There's an elegance yes. to it. And at the end of the day, you know, Nick brought up a great point. I want to sort of discuss that point because it's huge. It's a great point. Um, there, There is a way that that salespeople do life, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think the sophisticated salesperson is a listening person, is a teaching person. Um, knows when to speak and when not to speak. It is, it is the salesperson that stops wars from happening. Um, similarly, the salesperson has the power to, to fund the wars and the evil products involved in it. Um, yeah. it's such a, it's such an awesome power. Diplomacy is salesmanship, right? You know, um, um, being a, a CEO and a boss is salesmanship. Um, you know, you are, you may not be moving a product to your people, but you're moving a vision and a way of life and a way of being, um, so this this the salesperson does life in a certain manner, uh, and I think that that teaching is a big part of that. Learning how to teach people, right? Because I gotta say something. And yeah, I've often said, like you know, we're so resistant. There's so much garbage out there. Uh, so as consumers, especially in the U.S., but in the Western world generally, uh, Paul's coming to us from Greece today. Uh, there's this materialism and we're sort of used to it. We're used to all this advertising coming in and, and we're, whoa, no, 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 no. Right. We put up all these guards. So a salesperson has a product that is genuinely going to make your life better. Right. And they believe it and they've got to show you that they've got to communicate that to you by, by helping you to see past the noise 
by teaching them how to see past the noise. And when you do that, I think that you've made a customer for life. You've become a confidant in in this person's life. And that's true whether or not you're selling franchises, um, investment plans, or yarn projects on the internet. Your thoughts, Paul Democritu? I think that's very powerful. It's very true. And um, a lot of people fail. I'll tell you a fad that will kill you as a salesperson right now. Yeah. And there's a saying, those who can't do teach. And that's the biggest crap I've ever heard in my life. And I'll tell you why. It's a different skill. Yeah. You see, just some of the best coaches in the world, trainers in the world, yeah. uh, professionals in the world just because they're not in the field you know shooting hoops <laughs> doesn't mean they can't they don't know what's going on and it's this ego that a salesperson will go through at some point will stop learning stop listening to his manager even if he knows what the manager is saying just listen guess what you're learning how to listen and in general you know it, it's a different skill set teach if you say that those who can do teach it's like saying those who can teach do it just doesn't work out. So right. get that out of your mindset. Right. You know, and there's 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 obviously some truth. There's obviously tr some truth to the actor who didn't make it teaching acting. Right. Uh, awesome. Here's the thing: is uh, not everybody can be Denzel. You know what I mean? Uh, not everybody can do that. And 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 so you know, finding those people, right? Having that purpose, having that role in the marketplace, I think is vital. And as a salesperson, you want to really find your connection with everyone, <laughs> excuse me, and their role in that economy, how valuable it is when you have a client who loves golf, but you also have a client who is a golf supplier or, or you know, you have a, a friend who works at the driving range and, and you're able to buy some buckets. I'll tell you, we, we struggle every year. We do client gifts a couple times a year, maybe like three times a year. We send client gifts out to our, 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 our big partners, you know, and it's always such a struggle because I, I love to do sort of like the big gift baskets where it's like, you know, ham and meats and cheeses, but I struggle with it because it's not personal, right? And it doesn't reflect that. Like I've come to know you over the last year. Uh, the flip side, it's like everyone will enjoy this today. You know, you know what I mean. Like everyone will eat the salted caramel pecans, uh, so you know there'll right. be some some smiliness. But you always want to like show your your clients that that you're not here just for the sale today, but that you're here to be their trusted advisor in this industry. You, you know, their connector to different and wonderful new things. Uh, and it's not about, it's not about the trickery. You know, Nick had said, if if a salesperson had come to me with these tricks, I, it would have majorly turned me off. And I would say that a lot of people have, have that opinion. What, what where I want to go and where I want to sort of wrap up with today, Paul, is, okay. you know, these things, they can come off like tricks, right? They can come off like tricks. But I think that the idea is, is that you're becoming a person who lives a certain type of way. You're becoming a person that loves people, that wants to help people. And, and as you're learning how to become that person, you're learning things about NLP. You're learning things about body language. You're learning how to use people's names. Um, and, and during that process, you, when it feels like trickery, it's almost like you've met a salesman who's on his way up. And he's just in that middle ground where he's working on the things, but he hasn't yet made it a part of his natural character. Paul, how how can you coach a salesperson in, in sounding authentic and being authentic with some of the tactics that we've discussed here today? Okay. I'll tell you the best close right now that will answer your question. There is one close. It's not exactly a close, okay? But it's a clue that will answer everything that just happened, okay? It's called the goodnight kiss clothes. And what I want you to think about, I want you to picture this. Picture, you you know, you want to go out on a date and you want this girl, you really love her. You, you authentically have feelings for her and you want to go out with her. You want it to be your girlfriend. You want to you, you wanna basically marry her, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Now, let's say you go... You pick her up, now, now listen to this. You go and you pick her up, up at her porch. You meet the parents. The parents says, have her back by 11. 
you walk to the car, you open the door for her, like a gentleman. The yep. woman gets in, the girl gets in, you close the door, you go around, you take it to a nice meal, you talk. You walk down the beach at night, you're holding her hand, right? You give her a few compliments. You take her, you show her a good time, then you take her home on time and right at that porch. Now, before you do anything, listen to this, the alternative, right? You pick her up, you come dressed like a bum in front of her parents. She opens her own door. You drive screeching off. You take it to McDonald's. Not that McDonald's is bad, but you take it to McDonald's and you make her pay for it. You take her, you don't take a romantic walk. You try to, I don't know, feel her up or whatever in the car in the driveway so she feels cheap. Right? You get her home late so she's in trouble. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go back to the first thing. If you treat her right in the first example and you lean in to kiss her and just wait, guess what? There is no close. That's your whole pitch. It's your whole performance. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. If you try to do it in the second way, She'll probably slap you, and the dad will probably come out and kick you while you're down. Yeah, you, you're. It's not about the clothes. It's not about trickery. Trickery. It's not about anything. It's about being authentic, being respectful, and showing the being, being you, being correct, being the person you need to be. There's. That's it. There's all these clothes and everything. They're great. They have their place. But nothing be, be, beats authenticity. Yeah, I you know agree. what I mean. And being authentic from the the very beginning to the very end of the sale. You know, nobody likes this guy who they met, and and he was a sports and or you know he was a you know business school nerd. And then by the end of the the conversation, he's a golf he, he's like a golf aficionado, just like you, right? Nobody wants that, right? People want, especially the buyers of your product. They want complimentary skill sets. They're buying something from you because you can provide something that they don't already have access to, right? They want that complimentary skill set. So show them who you are and be that person from beginning to end. Paul, you did a great, great interview today. Great stuff or discussion. I know you wanted to make it more of a discussion and hopefully we did well with that. Um, you're an author. You've got you've got so, some social platforms going on. Talk to us about how we can follow you, stay in touch with you. Okay, so just type my name in Google. You'll find everything you need. I think the best place to meet up with me is on YouTube, which is where I give advice, sales advice, success advice, and so forth. Um, if you if my name is too hard to spell, just go pauldtv.com. And yeah, just uh, get in touch. I'm, I'm everywhere. By my name, everywhere on every single platform, almost. Now you uh, might Facebook you might actually and, uh, you might actually find some old rap, some old hip hop. You albums, may do. You may find some hip hop, some some music videos. Uh, you may find a lot of things. Actually, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Paul, I yeah. hope that you'll um, get engaged with us in the comment section below. I'm sure we'll get comments on the replay. We'd love to hear from you guys on where you're challenged as a salesperson or as a small business owner. What is it that next level that you want to get to? What are some of the skill sets you've got to uh, to grow? We'd love to hear from you on that. And don't forget to subscribe oh, to the channel for more. Can I give a gift to your viewers? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I've released three books. I want to give one book of each to whoever you want. Um, the first one is Success IAO, Improvise, Adapt, Overcome. That has to do with mindset and anything you're doing. I want to give one of these away. I want to give one of the closest part three. I only have part one here because I sold them all. Yeah, uh, good. I didn't write part one. <laughs> I, I wrote part three with living legend Ben Gay III. I want to give one of those away. And my latest book, how to sell a pen really wow now huge. it's up to you who i give them to uh if you want to hold like a giveaway uh something maybe i should have done this before <laughs> i'm not sure first person that comments whatever i i love it i'll tell you this we're gonna do um share this video on twitter share this video on twitter oh. don't forget to tag me so that i can see that you actually shared it 
We're gonna pick Paul. We'll go back. We'll pick a winner today, and we'll uh, we'll announce it. Uh, we'll announce it on Twitter. I love it, man. Thanks so much for sharing that, and thank well, you guys for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe for more training every week on how you can grow your business and get more customers using online video systems. We'll see you guys next week. As the audience watches me struggle, watches me struggle to cut the stream. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Backstage cam. All right, I got to walk over now. I have to walk over to the to the camera here and